The floor is yours, Madam Chair. All right. I call to order the Public Improvement Commission hearing of July 14th, 2022. Uh, Todd, will you take attendance? Certainly. Would the representative from the Transportation Department please uh, state his or her name? Amy Gordon. Uh, Water and Sewer Commission. Denise Devlin. Commission for Persons with Disabilities. Gerald Leon. Uh, Inspectional Services Department. Brian Ronan. Uh, my understanding is public works and property management are not available today, but we do have a quorum. All right, uh, at the request of the Public Improvement Commission staff, uh, I'll entertain a motion for the acceptance of the minutes of the PIC hearing held on June 30th, 2022. Make a motion to accept the minutes of the public hearing um, held on June 30th, 2022. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, utility poll hearings. Uh, first one on a joint petition by Eversource Energy and Verizon New England Inc. for a poll installation within Harvester Street, Public Way, Brighton to relocate one private utility pole to be located on its North Philly side, generally at its intersection with Sinclair Road. Hi, good morning. This is Katie Flaherty from Eversource Electric, and I'm here with one of our engineers, Mohammed. Um, this is. Um, Eversource would like to relocate this utility pole. It's at the request of the fire department because they said it would be difficult. Oh, let me pull up. Um, um, there we go. The plan. Um, this is the existing pole location right here. Oh, can you see it now? The plan. We can. Yes. Thank you, Kim. Oh, okay. Um, the pole is located right here. We want to relocate it over here. And it's the re at the request of the fire department because of the location. They said it's difficult to navigate a turn there. And I'll just add that uh, there's a development project going on um, on this parcel, uh, which is also probably uh, um, adding to the, the, the need to relocate this pole. Okay. Uh, questions or comments by commission members? PIC staff? All set. I'll entertain a motion um, on utility poll hearing number one. I make a motion to approve on a joint position by Eversource Energy and Verizon New England incorporated for utility pole installation within Harvester Street, Brighton, as read into the record by the chair. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, motion passes. Utility pole number two on a joint petition by Eversource Energy and Verizon New England Inc. for a pole installation in Fairmount Ave Public Way, Hyde Park to relocate one private utility pole to be located on its southwesterly side at address numbers 243 to 247 Northwest of Summit Street. Yes, good morning again. Um, again, Eversource Electric is requesting to relocate this pole. Here's the existing pole. This is the new location and it's at the request of the customer at 243 for a driveway expansion. Questions or comments by commission members? PIC staff. Sorry, we're good. I'll entertain a motion on utility poll hearing number two. Make a motion to approve on a joint petition by Eversource Energy and Verizon New England Incorporated for utility poll installation within Fairmount Avenue, Public Way, Hyde Park, as read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, public hearings. Uh, first Thank public you. hearing uh, on a petition by 1135 Harrison Ave LLC for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjacent to the following public ways in Roxbury. Tabor Street on its northerly side at address number 16 west of Harrison Ave. Harrison Ave on its westerly side at address number 1135 between Tabor Street and Palmer Street, Shabazz Way. Palmer Street on its southerly side of 
west of Harrison Ave. New business 630-2022 is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Pedestrian Easement Plan 16 Tabor Street, Harrison Ave, Tabor Street and Palmer Street, Roxbury, one sheet dated July 7, 2022. Tim or Phil, please go ahead. Oh, I think uh, Phil, you, you were going to introduce the project, if you could unmute. Yeah. Okay, sorry, uh, here I am. Uh, at the um, hearing uh, two weeks ago, it was suggested that uh, I, as the architect uh, and landscape architect, uh, might present the building since it was a new uh, it's a brand new ground up six story building. And uh, I have the, a presentation, a brief one, I can make it brief, that uh, shows what the outside of the building would look like and uh, floor plans and the like. Um, Tim um, from Waterfield, Tim Wong is here. Um, last time Jacob Murray was here and Tim is um, uh, batting up for him. Uh, so I can start and show you the building. Is there? Are we going to share screen? What do we do here? Do I click share screen on my end? I'm sorry. Yes, uh, please go ahead. I'll click share screen. And um, I think that, do you see a presentation here? Yes. On, okay. Um, I'm going to just click on it so it's big. I think I can. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, God. Hi, do you see a presentation? Here. Uh, I'm seeing, Phil, I'm seeing your screen with, uh, looks like uh, some Roman architecture with uh, columns presented. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, that's the thing about that. Okay, I have three, I have three monitors, so I'm ah. making sure we have the uh, monitor that I want. Uh, that's why I'm asking the question. Um, your screen sharing, let's see what it says do I have. Often it comes up with allowing me to um, you're now seeing my screen, which is my desktop. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. So if I Now you see a column of uh, presentation. Am I correct? No, we're no, still, it's the same. still Roman columns. Oh my, oh my. Roman columns. And, you know, I have the Pro app and all of that business, so, and I updated it to. Try to make this work. When, so when you select share screen, can you like select a, a particular like window to share as opposed to? It like usually a comes up. Here, we, here we go. Here we go. Um, I appreciate that. And as you spoke, it decided to allow me to do that. And um, I will choose three and put it over there. Now you should see a floor plan. I do believe, let's see, stay with the floor plan. Here we are. Do you see a floor plan of the building and an image below? On no, still, still the same image. Okay. I wonder, oh, here, uh, I get it. Okay, it only wants Will it allow me to share three? Here we go. There are some hidden prompts. And you still have the same screen, right? Correct. Um. I am not understanding 
It has, you are sharing screen, it says stop share. That's my other, my so other. Why, why don't we walk through the actual PIC plans and maybe if you email your presentation to Todd, he can present it um, and we can walk through the building aspect of it at the tail end of it. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. I will, I will do that immediately. Thank you. So is there somebody else or Todd, can you put up the PIC? Sure, yeah, so Ashley's, Ashley's gonna present the actual PIC plans right now um, and then, um, Tim and Phil, you can kind of walk us through those uh, as soon as she gets them up. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. So I clicked share screen. Are you, are you guys seeing anything? Not yet. Still fill screen. I'll stop sharing. Here we go. Okay. Ashley, you're all set now. Uh, if you want to put up the pet easement plan, Tim can talk, or Tim or Phil can talk about that. Oh, okay. So I'm starting with the, uh, we're going to start with the pet easement. Yes, yeah, so if you could do the other one first, please. The pet easement plan is pretty self-explanatory, so if you just want to okay. kind of yeah. over, you know, the, the specifics of it. Okay. Um, so the uh, pedestrian easement plan, it's, it is very self-explanatory. Uh, basically, the situation is, um, maybe actually I can, maybe I can share okay. it. Is that, do you guys see that? Uh, There's the easement plan. Okay, yeah, uh, okay, it's from, from my computer. All right. Um, Basically, we're, uh, it would be giving the city an easement uh, to walk on uh, the, tape, the 16 Tabor Street property. Uh, the reason is because the uh, foundation of the building is, uh, or the sidewall of the building is set back from the property line. Uh, it's uh, like that in some cases now. Uh, uh, in other cases right now, the, uh, the, the building wall is pretty much, is, is somewhat at the property line, but it, with the new construction uh, shifting back, and um, the, uh, so the space that's the sidewalk will be continued to use as sidewalk, uh, continue to be used by the public. Um, and so that's why the, the need, need for pedestrian easement. Uh, so these areas are outlined in green. If you see like a faint green um, uh, dotted line around the, prim the three premier sides of the building uh, along, the, along the streets. Um, and uh, the total, uh, approximately 8,000 square feet, and uh, the furthest they reach into the, in, into the property is uh, 5.7 feet. So I would like to add that the reason for the increased sidewalk width is it's being, BPDA uh, in their studies of um, the sidewalks and uh, areas in um, Nubian Square and elsewhere is that they would like these um, widths wherever they can, and uh, the main street, uh, Harrison Avenue, was increased, and as well as Tabor and Palmer Street. So this was from neighborhood meetings and from BPDA standards. Um, so we made our site, we were uh, giving over the remaining parcel from property back to face of building. So it's essentially uh, in response to a request from the city of Boston. So forever uh, this property will be part of the city along with the sidewalk in front of it and it makes for a very nice uh, uh, pedestrian uh, friendly uh, sidewalks uh, questions or comments from commission members yes he's staff uh, no I have the uh, re renderings from Phil if we want to look at those now or wait to Let's do it with this specific repair. Let's uh, um, 
All right, I'll uh, entertain a motion on public hearing item number one. Make a motion to approve public hearing number one on a petition by 1135 Garrison Ave LLC for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement uh, adjacent to the following public ways in Roxbury, Tabor Street, Harrison Ave, Palmer Street, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Pedestrian Easement Plan, 16 Tabor Street, Harrison Avenue, Tabor Street, and Palmer Street, Roxbury, as read into the record by the chair. Second. Okay. All in favor? All right. Okay. All right. Uh, public hearing item number two. Uh, on a petition by 1135 Harrison Ave LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Roxbury consisting of curb, sidewalk, and pedestrian ramp reconstruction, as well as new and relocated specialty pavement, street trees, street lighting, infrastructure, bike racks, and driveway curb cuts, Tabor Street, generally at address 16 west of Harrison Ave, Harrison Ave on its westerly side at address number 1135, generally between Tabor Street and Palmer Street, Shabazz Way. Palmer Street, west of Harrison Ave, new business 630, 2022, is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repairs, 16 Tabor Street, Harrison Ave, Tabor Street, Palmer Street, Roxbury, two sheets dated July 13th, 2022. Uh, and I think that Todd can pull up your presentation if you are if you want to walk through the, the building piece. Okay. Um, so did you want to do the building piece first now? Okay. Uh, I'll stop okay. shit. I'll stop sharing. Uh, Todd's going to share. So this is what the building would look like from across Harrison Avenue. It's the corner of Tabor Street, our pedestrian and our residential entrance is the first door down on the right hand side of this uh, building. The all the way to the right, there's a little bit of a brick building that is Palmer Street. Um, I want to make note that it wasn't our arbitrariness to change the address of what is a Harrison Avenue large facade, but the, the address is number 16 Tabor because that's where people come and go and where the 30 residents of the building will come and go. It's um, five stories um, to a cornice and then a sixth store story sets back a little bit at uh, that uh, roof of the at the top of the fifth floor. Uh, we can go to the next one uh, if there if you'd care to see, I was asked, and it's a pleasure for me to present, you know, our architecture uh, gentleman uh, on the, um, the PIC commission that suggested that we might show what this is going to look like. This is the um, Tabor Street entrance, pedestrian entrance, uh, small windows, two windows to the right are retail, to the left are uh, space used uh, for the buildings, uh, building occupants on the left, the two windows on the left side. We can go to the next. And so we um, expect to have uh, two retail spaces here with the retail entrances off Harrison Avenue. Uh, hopefully they'll have someone that uses the wider sidewalk for cafe seating or some such thing like that. Um, it's a nice thought. Anyway, uh, next. And this is Palmer Street, so we see the return uh, from Harrison Avenue of three windows on the left that have to do with that retail space. And then we have entrances for uh, an exit for corridor and entrance for bike room there. And then uh, the start of the easement on the right. So uh, these are other views. Um, and uh, we think that ultimately the building will fit in quite nicely. It, we had done a building number 10 Tabor around the corner and it, it's working with that massing as well as some future planning that uh, will take place on the other side of Palmer Street here. So anyway, um, here are street level presentations. We're using ginkgo trees on the two side streets and we're trying to uh, initiate some Amer uh, American Elm uh, along Harrison Avenue. Uh, see if we can bring that back to uh, the city. Anyway, it's a good suggestion from Parks. Next. And these are more engineering plans. I don't think we need to go on. Uh, Tim had covered that. Our first floor plan shows the entrance here at the bottom of the sheet into an elevator lobby corridor. Uh, this is now second floor. So we have an elevator, a little square uh, toward the bottom and a, a, a double-loaded corridor with units on either side there. So, 
And that can be a wrap up. The, we can see the rest of uh, Tabor Street, which ultimately will become more or less a, uh, a pedestrian street. We already have 45 units further up at 10 Tabor. So this will add 30 units. So this uh, uh, side street will become active with uh, pedestrians coming and going from their retail. And there's plans for the other end of Tabor for another kind of apartment building. So it's uh, uh, very much of a changing neighborhood and we're proud to be part of that. So thank you for the opportunity. Great, now, yeah, can we see the specific repair plan? We'll go through that quickly and... Uh... Oh yes, I can share that right right here. Yep. All right, uh, yeah, I'll just uh, quickly uh, do a review of the specific repairs that go along uh, with, with the new building. Um, We'll be uh, putting in all new sidewalk, new concrete sidewalk, replacing the uh, kind of mix of old concrete and bituminous concrete sidewalks that are there now. Um, I mentioned adding the trees, uh, the ginkgo trees. Um, with on Harrison Ave, uh, they'll be in uh, in mulch uh, due to requests from uh, the Parks Department, and along the Palmer Street and Tabor Street, it'll be. Uh, the trees will be surrounded by uh, permeable pavers. Uh, we're also adding light poles, um, single acorn uh, or acorn lights on Palmer Street and Tabor Street, and uh, pendant poles along Harris Ave. Uh, we'll be uh, taking an existing curb cut on Palmer Street. Uh, we're reducing it to a 12-foot driveway, and uh, that the our access loading is is going to be through Palmer Street, uh, and then the three existing curb cuts that are for the existing property will be closed. Um, we're adding uh, uh, two accessible ramps uh, going across Palmer Street, uh, one on each side, and, and also Tabor Street, one on each side. And then uh, working through with the planning, planning development uh, department, we're going to put in uh, six biking park spaces along uh, Palmer Street, yeah. uh, three, I think, bike hitches there uh, to have bike, bike parking there. Um, just uh, some miscellaneous points. Uh, we have uh, Boston Water and Sewer uh, Commission approval. Um, and uh, in terms of total numbers, there's seven new trees, uh, four new ramps, uh, three new light poles. Um, and yeah, all these, all these things have been uh, uh, revised, updated, coordinated with, uh, yeah, from, from since the prelim preliminary meeting, uh, yeah, with the uh, city of Boston feedback of the various departments. All right, questions or comments by commission members? PIC staff. You're all set. All right, I'll entertain a motion on public hearing item number two. Make a motion to approve public hearing number two on a petition by 1135 Harrison Ave LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Roxbury, Tabor Street, Harrison Avenue, Palmer Street, as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division, specific repairs, 16 Tabor Street, Harrison Ave, Tabor Street, and Palmer Street, Roxbury, two sheets dated July 13, 2022, as read into the record by the chair. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, public hearing item number three on a petition by Verizon New England Inc. for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within the following public ways in Roxbury. Burke Street from the side of number 716 Columbus Ave to Tremont Street, Tremont Street, northeast of Burke Street, new business 630 2022 is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan Verizon. 716 Columbus Ave, proposed conduit installation, one sheet dated June 2022. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is James Tejondo. I'm representing Verizon New England. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen real quick and show you the plans. So, you pretty much said it all. This petition will be uh, requesting approval to place about 362 feet of new conduit uh, from Verizon Manhole 15 from the 432 to a new proposed handhold that will be placed by Extinet. Uh, this will be to provide new service. Um, are there any questions? Questions or comments from commission members? 
KSC staff. All set. All right, I'll entertain a motion on public hearing item number three. Make a motion to approve public hearing number three on a petition by Verizon New England Inc. for a grant location within the following public ways in Roxbury, Burke Street, Tremont Street, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant Location Plan Verizon, 716 Columbus Ave, proposed conduit installation, one sheet dated June 2022. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, uh, public hearing item number four on a petition by Verizon New England Inc. for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication condo of a city shadow within the following public ways in Roxbury. Smith Street from address number 40 to Parker Street. Parker Street generally at Smith Street, Gurney Street. New business 630 2022 is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan Verizon 40 Smith Street proposed conduit installation one sheet dated June 2022. James Dave Durando again representing Verizon New England. Uh, yes, this will be placing conduit from existing Verizon Main Hall 15 slash 611, uh, approximately 640 feet to new proposed handhold that will be placed by Extinet. Are there any questions? Questions or comments by commission members? PIC staff? All set. I'll entertain a motion on public hearing item number four. I make a motion to approve public hearing number four on a petition by Verizon New England for a grant to location with lead company status within the following public ways in Roxbury, Smith Street, Parker Street, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant to Location, Plan Verizon, 40 Smith Street, proposed conduit installation, one sheet dated June 2022. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that concludes the public hearings. Uh, new business number one, Amory Street, Center Street, Amory Street Connector, Roxbury, widening and relocation specific repairs on a set of petitions by the City of Boston Public Works Department and Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Development Corp, DBA 25 Amory Apartments, LLC. John, do you want to start us off? Stephen, I thought you were going to pull up the screen. Can okay. You pull, yeah. Can you pull up the focus plan? Yeah. Uh, good morning, John Schmidt with Niche Engineering. Uh, it's good to see all your faces. I'm here today with Jet Alexa of Public Works and Steve Farr of Niche Engineering. Um, this is for the uh, the improvements to Amory Street extension that runs from Amory Street to Center Street uh, in Jackson Square. Um, this is an, and once you see the 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 viewport, you'll understand uh, better the can site. You, can you see my map, Google no, Earth? We cannot. Okay. Let me try it again. On this one. Let's see. You see the zoom stuff, Stephen. You see the zoom? Okay. Let me move my uh, screen over there. You see the Google Earth now? Yeah. Yes, we can. Okay. Um, so, uh, as, Steve, if you could highlight where the Emory Street extension is. So this is an existing dead-end street um, that's been here for the last 40 years. Um, this, the redevelopment of Jackson Square started back in 2006, consisting of three sites. This is part of the third, that's the third site. You can see the white roof line that is 25 Emory Street, which is just completed construction um, this past summer. And then behind that in the tracks, there's another building that is currently in construction. Just to the left of that is Alliance Way, which is a um, which is Brewery Lane, which is a private way, which was laid out and approved by this commission about two years ago. So Amory Street Extension will be improving the street, reconstructing the street and providing an improved pedestrian experience, safe, accessible access from Center Street down to the revised, uh, revitalized neighborhood as well as a safe turning movements for vehicles that find themselves on this dead end street. Presently, as cars come down the street, they are forced to back out of it. Um, there was the original design, the original intent back in 2007 was to connect Amory Street Extension to Center Street. But that, that, uh, that, pro that thought was abandoned around 2014, 2015 after new traffic studies and additional knowledge became available saying it just didn't make sense. 
So uh, I think Jeff will discuss the project a little bit with you, and then Stephen will provide some more information. And if there's any questions about the history in the project, I'm here to answer them. Jeff, you want to just say a few words? Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Steve. Um, good morning, Commission. Um, thank you for having us. Um, my name is Jeff Alexis with the City of Boston Public Works Engineering Division. Um, here petitioning um, for the Public Works Project, Amy Marie Street, um, in collaboration with the developer. Um, as part of these project, as part of this project, we're making improvements to the public way. Um, with that, I'll turn it over to Steve Farr from the Engineering to kind of go over the specifics of the project. Thank you, Jeff. Steve Farr, Niche Engineering. Um, and I hopefully you can see the specific repair plan right now on my screen. Again, as John indicated, this is Amory Street, uh, which is now a dead end and continue to be a dead end. And the improvements to Amory Street will consist of new curbing, new sidewalks, street trees, street lighting, uh, and we will uh, add a, a hammerhead turnaround, if you will, at the end of the street to uh, for ease of turnarounds for fire access and the like um, and uh, and generally uh, improve the pedestrian access to center street from the end of amory street via this small ramp here um, these have all been i think reviewed by the city departments including disabilities and uh, also involved in this uh, petition is a widening and relocation for a small triangular piece of uh, private right away from 25 uh, Amory Street to be transferred to the city to allow for the sidewalk that you can see encroaches on 25 Amory. So a widening and relocation plan has been filed as well as this, these specific repair plans. That's pretty much it for me. Questions or comments from commission members? I assume two weeks is enough for you guys? Yes. All right, we'll see you on July 28th. Thank you. Is that right, Todd? Yes, 28th. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Right. Thank you. New business item number two, 400 Belgrade Ave, Beach Street, West Roxbury, Earth Retention License on a petition by KL. KYLLLP. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, members of the board, Attorney John Fulgini, um, the attorney for the developer, and with me is uh, Chai Mann, who is the team engineer. Um, as <clears throat> Amy stated, this is 400 Belgrade Ave. It's to install a temporary earth retention system. This is a development in a former gas station at the intersections of Belgrade and Beach Streets in West Roxbury and to the rear of that is West Roxbury Parkway. Um, this has been an approved multifamily development and calls for a four-story, 18 two-bedroom units with 33 below-grade parking spaces. As construction started, the contractor realized that a temporary earth retention system would be required to fortify the foundation and in turn protect the surrounding city property. The action here this morning is to install solar piles at various locations around the site and to cut these piles six feet below grade where they will remain. The sections of piling above the six feet will be cut and removed. The earth retention system will extend 106 feet along Birch Street, uh, sorry, Beach Street, and approximately 145 feet along Belgrade. At this point, I'm going to uh, turn it over to uh, Chai Man, who's the architect, to walk through the plans. Thank you very much for allowing us to present. Hi, good morning. Um, just one second, let me, uh, um, I got the wrong screen on. I'm trying to pull the PDF. We're seeing the earth retention plan, if that's what you're trying to pull up, Chief. Uh, are, you, are you looking at the, the plan itself? Yes. Oh, okay, because my screen looks different. That's why. Okay, um, I guess, um, so let me just, um, so the, the site is at the intersections where uh, West Rockford Parkway, Belgrade Avenue, and also Belgrade Avenue on the other side, which turn into Beach Street. Um, at the end. Um, so what we are showing is the uh, earth retention system um, to be surrounding the site where the deep excavation uh, is necessary for the basement constructions. 
uh, what we are showing is uh, H-pile and wood lacking. Uh, this is going to be about um, four and a half to five feet beyond the beyond the property boundaries. So we have enough room to do the uh, uh, excavation and construct the uh, foundations. This is um, section AA, which is um, on this side of the site, you know, pale gray on the <coughs> south side. You can see. And on the north side, where you see the section BB, is a little different uh, configuration because there is a 10 inch string line, so we would do a double uh, piling system um, just to make sure the 10 inch drain line is uh, can stay in place and we are not you know, uh, disturbing that the, um, the existing utility surfaces. It's kind of step, two step uh, for the uh, constructions on the, on the piling system. All this piling are going to be cut off at the end of construction uh, down to the depth of six feet um, or as, um, or in, if it need to be deeper as deemed by the city, it will be uh, um, cut down to the depth that the city desired. And beyond the six feet or, or uh, whatever depth that the city required, it will be abandoned in place. And, um, Above the um, from from the gray to approximately six feet, or or the, the desired gray will be entirely removed and uh, backfill and the and the construction the the sidewalk and the roadway will be con as constructed per the uh, approved specific repair plans. Um, this plan has been revised. The plan in front of you uh, is to address a. A few of the um, PIC comments, um, for, for instance, the um, uh, locus has been added, and um, the reference to on the title of Beach Street and Belgrade Avenue, and also uh, the reference to West Rockbury District. And uh, we also add the notes to clarify um, that um, the section of the um, of retention system down to six feet is entitled to be removed and the section from the um, six foot down to the to the um, bottom is going to be abandoned in place open up for any questions uh, I guess my only question is has this been coordinated with Ed Hesford from BTD um, I'll, I'll let John to speak with that. I think he's yeah, been doing that coordination. Sorry, Amy. Um, we notified all the utilities and all the city agencies required under the PIC. I will gladly reach out to Ed and discuss this. As what Chai had said, too, we have, as you guys remember, under specific repair plans, all the sidewalks are being replaced as part of this uh, proposal that was previously approved by this commission, together with pedestrian ramps. We're changing to curb lines, uh, we're closing curb cuts, we're moving light poles. Yeah, no, it's just really just uh, as, it, as it pertains to how it might impact, right, like whatever you already have as your construction management plan. Uh, re really, I just care that whatever uh, you're doing here is, is appropriately updated with Ed, but if you touch base with him between now and your public hearing, that's all we can work. Absolutely. Uh, any other? Uh, questions or comments from commission members? PIC staff? All set. Um, Chi, I just needed an um, updated copy of this plan uh, emailed to me. I need a chance. No problem. All right. Uh, is two weeks enough time? Uh, yes. Thank you. Right. We'll see you on uh, July 28th. Enjoy your day, everyone. Thank you very much for allowing us here. Thank you. Uh, business item number three, Westview Street, Bell, Blue Hill Avenue, Dorchester, grant of location on a petition by Exnet Systems, Inc. 
Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Keenan Brand. I'm here on behalf of XDAT. I'm uh, joined by Han from NBNC Engineering, as well as Arthur Pino from XDNet Construction. Uh, the petition we have in front of you today uh, is looking for permission to install a four-inch fiber conduit uh, that runs uh, along Westview Street from the intersection of Blueville Avenue. Uh, running approximately just over 2,032 uh, feet. Uh, it runs down Westview Street heading east. Uh, I think it eventually terminates at like a, at a ball field if you're looking for a landmark. As is customary, that's the net. We'll be supplying a shadow duct for the city, uh, which will terminate uh, adjacent to the uh, Exponent handle here. Um, again, 2,032 feet is the distance. The four foot conduit run. I'm um, happy to take any questions at this point. Hi, um, thank you so much for the presentation. Um, I was curious on whether or not um, the proposed manholes um, as it crosses Ames and Blue Hill Ave will be in the crosswalk, um, and if they are, if there's a um, feasibility to um, locate those out of the crosswalk, where those crosswalks land. Yeah, I did look into that, and was, my understanding is they will, they will not be in the crosswalks. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Uh, is two weeks enough time for you guys? Um, sorry to jump in, uh, Amy. Uh, just, I uh, sent a question to the project team well, a few days ago, um, they previously had a project uh, that runs along Blue Hill Ave that goes right past this intersection. Um, and I was just yes. curious to know whether this is going to connect to that um, and if uh, okay. these plans can be updated. Yeah, because Dan said that he would update those and I'll have them to you by in prior to the next meeting. Sure. Uh, that. Yep, that'd be great. Sometime next week would be perfect. Okay. Yep. You'll, you'll get them. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, so two weeks enough time for you guys? That'll be fine, yes, absolutely. All right, uh, new business item number four, uh, Gub Street, Cottage Street, East Boston, Grand Location on a petition by XNet Systems, Inc. Uh, good morning again, Keenan Brown from XNet, uh, Eric Matan and uh, Arthur Pino from XNet Construction. Um, this uh, petition uh, is looking for per uh, permission to install a four inch fiber duct with um, shadow duct. Uh, mainly on Gold Street near the intersection of Blueback. Uh, it's a, run, a relatively short run, about 300 feet. Uh, continues uh, down Gold, uh, Gold Street and turns left and terminates quickly on Cottage Street right there where you see that uh, handle. Again, about 300 feet, uh, as is customary. Uh, XNet will be providing a shadow effect for the city. We'll terminate adjacent to the XNet manhole. And as, uh, in terms of construction uh, management, we'll reach out to any uh, potential um, businesses that might be affected by this particular project. If you have any questions, we have to take those now. Questions or comments by commission members? PSC staff? All set on this one, thanks. All right, uh, we'll see you on July 28th. That'll be good, thanks. All right, new business uh, item number five, American Legion Highway, Clare Avenue, Hyde Park, Grand Location on a Petition by XNet Systems, Inc. Yes, good morning again. Keenan Brin here on behalf of XNet, along with Han and Arthur Pino from XNet Construction. Um, we have another petition for a fiber run that begins actually on Clare, Clare Ave and almost immediately turns east onto American Legion Highway. Uh, runs about 950 linear feet. Uh, where it terminates. If you're looking for a landmark, I believe there's like a shopping center uh, close by with a Walgreens in it, and that would be the, uh, the approximate termination point. Uh, as is customary, XNet will be supplying uh, shadow duct here for the city in, ad in addition to their four inch uh, fiber duct. Uh, if you have any questions, we have to take those now. Questions or comments from commission members? Casey Scott? All set. All right, we'll see you on the 28th. Uh, new business right. item number six, Washington Street, Cedrus Avenue, Beach Street, West Roxbury, Grant of Location on a petition by XNet Systems, Inc. 
Uh, good morning, Keenan Brin here, our fourth and final petition today. I'm joined by Han and Arthur Pino from Exonet Construction. Uh, this petition uh, is looking for permission to install a four inch fiber duct uh, with uh, city shadow duct. Uh, this would essentially take place on Washington Street. Uh, it begins at Washington Street at Metropolitan Avenue. Uh, it runs about 1,775 linear feet. There is a spur that uh, peels off to a foam pole in the first 100 feet, and it continues down Washington Street, where the, there's a short run onto uh, Cedrus, and then it continues down there and eventually terminates after making a left onto Beach Street, where you can see there. Um, again, 1,775 linear feet, mainly uh, running along Washington Street, um, as is customary, next step will be supplying shadow duct for the city. That's essentially it, and we'll be happy to take any questions at this point. Questions or comments from commission members? PSC staff? All set. All right, we'll see you on the 28th. Easy enough, we'll see you then, thank you. Uh, that concludes the hearing. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Okay. All right. <laughs> We'll uh, see you guys in two weeks. Thank you. See you.